I'm Brad Bell with Molotov and I've made a huge mistake, but this is my favorite Android launcher. All right, let's cover the camera up and hope it's okay. In case you're unfamiliar, the launcher I'm talking about is Niagara Launcher. It's a home screen replacement for Android that functions a little differently than your traditional Android or iOS home screen. So instead of being a grid of apps, you've got a long list, which sounds strange, but once you get used to it, it's more powerful, easier to use with one hand, and it actually looks a lot better. I'm gonna teach you about it today, so follow me around. We'll start with the most obvious change, which is this waterfall-styled vertical app orientation. It's a lot different than most Android apps, but it helps clean up your home screen, and I find it helps me use social media a little less. I'll explain why. So with Niagara, you only have a single home screen that shows you the time, your favorite app, the weather, folders, or widgets. You can touch and hold on the right side of the screen to quickly jump down an alphabetical list to find any app you're looking for quickly, though. So I found this helps me pare down my home screen to just the essentials, and like I said, I spend a little less time on social media. You can also swipe towards the right on each app and that's going to show you the notifications or some quick toggle settings within them. It's like holding down on an app in a regular Android launcher. If you can't live with such a minimal home screen, you can even subcategorize your apps into folders. This isn't something I use a lot on Niagara, but I do use it to keep all my photography apps in one place just because I want to be able to access them quickly, but I don't want them cluttering up my home screen. Finally, you can enable the home screen to show a Google search button, the weather, and your upcoming calendar events all without using third-party widgets, so it really follows a cohesive design. This is part of the reason I started using Niagara in the first place. I think it was when I was using the Huawei P20 Pro like three years ago or something, and I just found it a little much, and I wasn't the biggest fan of Huawei's, I guess, home screen design. So I slapped Niagara on there, and this is where we got to ever since. It's just really clean, it looks cohesive, so if you're looking to sort of minimalize your home screen while also making it look nice, Niagara might be the way to go. So beyond just looking cool, Niagara Launcher also has some perks that help you just get a little more out of your home screen, like the ability to hide unused apps, which is something default home screens, except for I think OnePlus sort of don't do, which is weird. This helps clean up your app list considerably, and this is great because I have so many random apps on my phone that I want for features, but I don't need to tap on ever, like the settings app. If you can access it through the notification shade, I don't really need an app for it anyway. You can also access these hidden apps through system search, which is like unreal levels of powerful on Niagara. It's not effective as the system search that's built into iOS, but it can get pretty close actually if you download a third-party app called Sesame. The basic system search just allows you to search for apps, but once you get Sesame, you can even search for things on the web and sort of deep link into some apps, although not very many. Other perks include a feature that will hide your music apps from your home screen until you connect headphones or a Bluetooth speaker. This isn't a make or break thing, and it's still probably worth having your main music app on your home screen at all times, just in case you want to play through the speaker on your phone. But it's kind of a smart feature that makes me kind of grow to love Niagara because it's proactive, and I love when tech is proactive. Speaking of being proactive, the launcher will also learn which apps you use and put them on your home screen when it thinks you want to use them. For me, it will just throw a bunch of social media apps up after work because it knows generally after work I'm looking at Reddit. So the last thing to kind of talk about with Niagara Launcher is how customizable it is. It's not crazy customizable like Nova Launcher, but it does have some perks. To start off, it's got all the basic Android customizations. I mean, you can change your app icon size, you can change your app icons, and a few other things, plus lighter dark modes. But the coolest one is actually a built-in icon pack called Niagara Dots. If you use this one, it takes the color from your app icon and applies it to just a small dot. This actually helps you use your phone a little less and keeps you out of those social media apps because you're not hit with that bright orange Reddit app or that bright blue Twitter. It's a bit weird, but it looks clean and like I said, it keeps you off of those apps that are kind of dragging you in and maybe wasting a little bit of time that no one really wants to talk about. All in all, we made it to the end of the day. You guys got to learn a little bit about Niagara Launcher. I actually got to see a little bit of Niagara Falls and I guess what I should say is that there is one hidden catch that I failed to mention, and that is that some of the cooler features like the Sesame Search integration, the dots, icons, and widgets are locked behind a $15 paywall, unfortunately. That being said, the app is run by a single indie developer who is, I would say, probably working super hard because the app is super good. So I don't technically mind supporting him. If that's for you, I'm not sure, but I really do think it's worth it. You definitely get $15 out of it. I've had it for years. It works on all my Android phones. You don't need to buy it more than once, so that's good. And, you know, that's about it. If you're looking for a faster, cleaner way to just spice up your home screen and, you know, change it up a little bit, make your phone feel like new, Niagara Launch is a pretty good, a pretty good way to do that. Anyway, if you have any questions for me, reach out online anytime at the Brad Fad and make sure to follow at Mobile Syrup too for all kinds of crazy tech news. And before I go this time, I just want to mention that 
I haven't been to Niagara Falls since I was a little kid and coming back as an adult was kind of incredible. Just being on the boat this morning, can you bring the light over, or the camera over here? So being on the boat this morning, we were down there, just in the mist, you can barely see because it's dark, but we were down there, we were like looking up over the falls from the bottom was incredible. It's, an eight, eight, <laughs> it's the eighth wonder of the world and it's worth it. So if you're anywhere nearby, Buffalo, Ontario, and you haven't checked it out, I, I think it is worth it. I'll see you guys in the next one.